Two trillion metric tons of rock is headed straight for them, and impact is less than 20 minutes away. But the rock's enormous mass is only part of the threat. As it gets closer to the planet, the Earth's gravitational pull gets stronger, causing the asteroid to accelerate until it's traveling at more than 70,000 kilometers per hour. And mass times acceleration equals force. As the asteroid encounters atmosphere, friction turns it into a fireball. It takes just four minutes to cross the Atlantic Ocean on its way towards Mexico and the Alamosaurus. As it travels, it crushes and superheats the air surrounding it, turning gas and debris into white-hot plasma. At around 20,000 degrees Celsius, it burns many times brighter than the surface of the sun. just five seconds to flash through the atmosphere. The impact seems instantaneous. But hidden within this cataclysm is a series of discrete events, invisible to the naked eye, but key to understanding what follows. The asteroid's trajectory is shallow. It flies in at around a 30-degree angle to the surface. This means that the full brunt of its destructive power will be thrown forward of the impact point. Even before the fireball touches down, its brightness in the sky is unimaginable. Eight hundred kilometers from the impact site, the light is so intense it causes the flesh of the Alamosaurus to appear transparent and burns images of their shadows onto the ground. The scorching light sears their eyeballs. They now can't see what's headed their way, but they can feel it. The asteroid hits with an explosive force of a hundred trillion metric tons, more than a billion times the power of the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If the asteroid had crashed into deep ocean, some of the force would have been absorbed. Instead, it hits the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico, which instantly vaporize. In a fraction of a second, the entire asteroid disintegrates into the planet. Earth and rock are hurled skywards at 160,000 kilometers an hour. Behind them, more than 300,000 cubic kilometers of the Earth's crust explodes from the ground. 800 kilometers from the crash site, the air temperature reaches 300 degrees Celsius, so hot that the water in the dinosaur's skin boils, escaping in bursts of steam. The fiery blast sucks every drop of moisture from the surrounding vegetation. Anything directly exposed to the blistering heat is simply burned alive. When the asteroid struck, most of the impact energy was deflected out or up. Only 1% of the force traveled down into the ground. But it's enough to ring the planet like a bell. Seismic waves radiate across and through the Earth. Sixteen minutes and forty seconds later, they reach the Pacific Northwest.
The valley shakes as a magnitude 11 earthquake ripples through the ground. Triceratops panic at the edges of the valley in their desperate attempt to escape the tremors and falling debris. Smaller animals take shelter underground. Meanwhile, the ejector cloud approaches at 16,000 kilometers per hour, baking the earth with unrelenting heat. Millions of volts of static electricity charge the cloud like a giant battery, creating a vast electrical storm. Superheated rocks shower the valley in a burning hail. The Quetzalcoatlus managed to flee the devastation caused by the quake but there's no way to hide from a rain of fire. Only the valley floor can provide shelter, and they're too big to descend quickly. Eventually, the male's tattered wings can no longer keep him aloft. If his mate doesn't find shelter soon, she'll be next. Mountain slopes, two triceratops emerge above the cool sea mist. They're almost out of the quake ravaged valley when the ejector cloud arrives. Just hours ago, North America was a dinosaur paradise. Now, it's a living hell. The ejector cloud continues its spread across the globe, but the effects it has on the ground vary dramatically. Twelve thousand kilometers away in Mongolia, the cloud rolls in silently from the east. Temperatures on the ground creep upwards, a few degrees hotter every second. There's no audible warning for the creatures here, only the mounting heat. As the air reaches 50 degrees Celsius, their only hope is shelter. At 70 degrees, survival is measured in minutes. And at over 90 degrees, in mere seconds. 90 minutes after impact, the temperature on the ground in Mongolia peaks at 150 degrees Celsius. 